Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to Examby. This is the ninth part of the video and we are discussing economics and social issues questions which are most useful for your NABAD grade A and grade B exam. So grade A main states are already there. The scheme Karm Sathi Prakalpa is launched by West Bengal government focusing on very simple question. This scheme focuses on unemployed youth. Under this scheme, 1 lakh unemployed youth would be provided soft loans and subsidies to make them self-reliant. So rather than looking for a job, the government is going to help unemployed people that you get a loan and start some business activity so that you can become self-reliant. The next one is artificial intelligence for agriculture innovation, AI for AI. This program in collaboration with 4th Industrial Revolution, C4IR, World Economic Forum is launched by. So here again you have to tell the government name. In the last question I told, I asked about the focus and told you the government but in the real exam, the state government who launched that. But in the real exam it may be there that the name of the scheme is given and the state government is asked like in this question. So here the correct answer is Telangana government, the team C4IR. WF World Economic Forum India worked closely with the closely with Professor Jaisankar Telangana State Agriculture University and the Telangana government's ITNC department to identify the high impact youth cases of the artificial intelligence which would use benefit both the farmers and policy makers. This is slightly difficult question now because you have three statements to read. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched platform for transparent taxation housing honoring the honest which of the following statements are correct about that this was a front page news in most of the newspaper the platform has major reforms like faceless assessment faceless appeal and taxpayers charter statement one statement two faceless assessment and taxpayer charter has come into force from 15th august 2020 the facility of faceless appeal will be availed from 1st january 21 very interesting question so only first statement is correct because this has been affected from 13th august not 15th august and for appeal also it is available from 25th september that is the birthday of Deen Dayal Upadhyay. That's why I said this is a difficult question because you have to remember some details and these answer options make it further difficult. The government has formed a committee to determine ceiling rates under the RODTEP. Do you know the full form of this? This is scheme. The committee will be chaired by RODTEP relates to remission of duties and taxes on exported products. And this committee is chaired by G.K. Pillai, who is former secretary of the, of the government and retired CBEC members Y.G. Parande and Gautam Ray are also members to this committee. But most important is remember the chairman, which type of taxation would lead to more income equality? This is a concept based question and it, it also tells whether you understand the difference between a progressive tax and a regressive tax. The correct answer to this is a progressive taxation. Progressive taxation means as your income increases, the taxation amount increases. So today also like you may be knowing for low income people there is no tax and then at certain income it is 10% tax, then 20%, then for very high earning individual it is 30% of the income tax they have to pay. So when tax increases with the tax in income increase, so that is called progressive tax and regressive taxes tax rate decreases as the taxable amount increases. In proportional tax, tax rate is fixed with the amount it is not changing. Say for example GST, you buy 5 item, you buy 2 item, so you are paying whatever 18% of the GST that remains the same. For example, you have to be prepared for such concept based questions also and that is where the question bank you get in IXAMBI course is going to immensely help you. In short time you can cover these study notes and revise all through MCQs. We are also doing daily life classes for NABARD mains exam right now. You want to see the demo of the course please visit the website and see the demo of the course and this is your last chance to get this opportunity by paying 75%. You can enroll now. Next question is according to the Digital Quality of Life Index 2020, what is the rank of India? Again, very simple straightforward question. It is 57th. 
Denmark is at number 1 followed by Sweden and Canada. India is 57th out of 85 countries in the overall category with 0.5 index point. And India ranked lowest in terms of e-infrastructure. So despite seeing lot of e-commerce, e-portals, we are ranking lowest in e-infrastructure. The digital initiative, next question, initiative launched by Rajasthan to bridge learning gap during COVID-19 pandemic age. What is the name of that initiative by the government? This is called SMILE and SMILE stands for Social Media Interface for Learning Engagement. And similar such initiative in other state government are like Union Initiative in Bihar, Project Home Classes in Jammu and Padhai Thunhar Duwar in Chhattisgarh and Mission Buniyad in NCR and City of Delhi. So it is in Delhi, not in Noida or Faizabad Gurugaon. It is in Delhi. Next question, which of the following is are correct about Sustainable Development Goal SDG? It is important to know all SDGs for your exam. The statement are, it seeks to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all by 2030. It has been adopted by India in 2016 and it has been released by UNEP. So, this is released by UNDP that's why this is wrong and India adopted this in 2015 not in 16 statement 1 is correct these type of questions where there are some statement and then answer options you have to be much more sure about choosing the right answer which of the following is not among the five core pillars for calculating DQL index we discussed about DQL index in the other question so internet speed is not one of the component. The five core pillars are internet affordability, internet quality, e-infrastructure, e-security and e-government. So we discussed that India's rank in DQL is 57th. Don't forget that. Last question. According to EPFO, the government's Umang app has seen 180% jump in uses during April-July period of the COVID pandemic. Which of the following statements are correct? The app can help its subscriber to access 16 different services of EPFO. Users need universal account number and registered mobile number with EPFO. Only A, both A and B are correct. That is making confusion. So both are correct here. PF, uh, EPFO app gives you access to 16 different services of EPFO using the mobile phone. And there is a universal account number which is required along with the registered mobile number. During this time, because people don't have income, so total 11.27 lakh EPFO claims have been filed. People are asking their PF money so that they can use it for their daily needs. There are a lot many layoffs and salary cuts etc. That's why there are more claims in EPFO. You want to know more about career opportunities, preparation guidance, how exam we can help you. You can reach to us at 920-552-4028. You can WhatsApp, you can SMS or you can call. Always remember, government exams made easy, I exam B.